This weekend, we come together as a people of faith to hear that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And may we be a people of faith that embrace his way, his truth, and the way he lived his life. So let us begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. May the grace and peace of God our Father, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us first acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you are the way that leads to forgiveness and hope. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the truth that sets us free from the pains of sin. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. And Lord Jesus, you are the life that's been poured out for us that we may embrace the resurrection. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. We give God praise. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, constantly accomplish the paschal mystery within us, that those you were pleased to make new and holy baptism may, under your protective care, bear much fruit and come to the joys of life eternal. For our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever, Amen. Our first reading comes from the Acts of the Apostles. As the number of disciples continued to grow, the Hellenists complained against the Hebrews because their widows were being neglected in the daily distribution. So the twelve called together the community of disciples and said, It is not right for us to neglect the word of God to serve a table. Brothers, select from among you seven reputable men filled with the Spirit and wisdom, whom we shall appoint to this task, whereas we can devote ourselves to prayer and the ministry of the word. The proposal was acceptable to the whole community. So they chose Stephen, a man filled with faith and the Holy Spirit. Also, Philip, Prochorus, Nicanor, Timon, and Parmenas, and Nicholas of Antioch, a convert to Judaism. They presented these men to the apostles who prayed and laid hands on them. The word of God continued to spread, and the number of the disciples in Jerusalem increased greatly. 
Even a large group of priests were becoming obedient to the faith. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response, Lord, let your mercy be on us as we place our trust in you. Lord, let your mercy be on us as we place our trust in you. Exalt you just in the Lord, Praise from the upright is fitting. Give thanks to the Lord on the harp. With the ten-string lyre, chant his praises. Lord, let your mercy be on us as we place our trust in you. Upright is the word of the Lord, and all his works are trustworthy. He loves justice and right. Of the kindness of the Lord, the earth is full. Lord, let your mercy be on us as we place our trust in you. See, the eyes of the Lord are upon those who fear him, upon those who hope for his kindness to deliver them from death and, per and preserve them in spite of famine. Lord, let your mercy be on us as we place our trust in you. Our second reading comes from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, come to him, a living stone, rejected by human beings, but chosen and precious in the sight of God. And like living stones, let yourselves be built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it says in Scripture, Behold, I am laying a stone in Zion, a cornerstone, chosen and precious, and whoever believes in it shall not be put to shame. Therefore, its value is for you who have faith. But for those without faith, the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone and a stone that will make people stumble and a rock that will make them fall. They stumble by disobeying the word as is their destiny. You are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people of his own, so that you may announce the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. 
Jesus said to his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. You have faith in God. Have faith also in me. In my Father's house, there are many dwelling places. If there were not, would I have told you that I'm going to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back again and take you to myself, so that where I am, you also may be. Where I am going, you know the way. Thomas said to him, Master, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? And Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, then you will also know my Father. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Master, show us the Father, and that will be enough for us. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you for so long a time, and you still do not know me, Philip? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I speak to you, I do not speak on my own. The Father who dwells in me is doing his works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. Or else believe because of the works themselves. Amen, amen, I say to you, whoever believes in me will do the works that I do and will do even greater ones than these, because I am going to the Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. On this weekend, we raise up the mission and dignity of love. We raise up in a special way those that God has chosen to be moms. Spiritual mothers, biological mothers, adoptive mothers, those who are foster mothers, those who are godmothers and grandmothers, mothers of faith, God has placed a special plan in their lives, and we are grateful that they embraced that plan. Growing up, one of the words that we heard in our house coming from my mom was the word, no, you can't do this. Or you have to finish your homework before you can go out and play or you can't go across the street, or you can't play baseball in front of the house. There were a lot of different rules that have been placed out. And as a young child, one had to think through those. We heard no a lot. I think my siblings heard it more than I because I'm the youngest. My grandmother used to say, you dasn't do that. And so I'm sure my siblings heard that more too. 
being the youngest and the favored, uh, I did not hear it as often. But in this time in which we're living now, when there are lots of rules and regulations and, and there are a lot of things that we're told we can't do, it's important to go back to how our parents shared that word no. My mom didn't say no because she wanted me to have a miserable life. She wasn't saying no because she really wanted to punish me. She said no, that you couldn't do this or you can't do that, out of love. There was something behind that. And, and so having learned that at a young age, that the, the no's that I heard were really based in love, it helps me embrace what's going on now. This time is not easy. We're all trying to, to grapple with what life is and, and what it should look like and, and, and how we can reopen and, and how we're going to be able to do this and what's the new normal. And, and we have to go back to that mission of love. God doesn't want us to have miserable lives. But he's inviting us out of love to take seriously what's being presented before us. So on this weekend, we want to thank moms for the love that they shared, accepting this mission given to them by God. In our gospel, we heard Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. We've heard those words a lot. We know Jesus is that way. We know of his truth, and we know of his life. And so the invitation for us throughout this next week is to reflect on how our lives connect to his. How do we live a life worthy of the breath that God has given to us? How do we live a life worthy of that breath then how do we bring that life to Jesus? How do we embrace a truth? A truth worthy of the truth that Jesus proclaimed. That he is the son of God. The truth of the forgiveness of sins. The truth of heaven and eternal life. How do we live a truth worthy of the truth that we proclaim him to be? And lastly, how do we follow a way worthy of the way that Jesus lived? A way that leads us to the cross and resurrection. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. The invitation for us is to embrace that mission that we may live and embrace and be a people that follow, worthy of what God has given to us as gift. As a holy people of faith, we now proclaim our common belief. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, 
who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As a family of faith united together, we now offer our prayers and petitions to our Heavenly Father. We pray for the church throughout the world that it may continue to proclaim Jesus as the way, the truth, and the life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray in a special way for all Catholic bishops and cardinals as they discern how to open churches in a graceful and safe way, that the Holy Spirit may be with them, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all elected officials that they may continue to discern what is safe, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray now also for the prayers that have been sent to us. We pray in a special way for the family court system that family custody hearings may start with a kindness and fairness for the children. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We also pray for those who do not have access to the internet and technology in these times, that they not, may not feel that they are left behind and that others may reach out to them, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our elderly, especially those with chronic conditions whose access to health care is now limited because of emergency policies that they may find peace in this moment, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all moms living and deceased. We pray for those who are expectant mothers at this time, that they may look forward to bringing life and love into the world, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for families that they may stay healthy and well and find happiness and joy again, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray in a special way for all who have died, especially due to complications of the virus, that they may find solidarity in their grief and families may come together with the peace and joy of the resurrection, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. At this time, you may now add your own intentions in the silence of your hearts. Loving God, you strengthen us and nourish us on this journey. You sent Jesus Christ to reveal your gift of love. Allow us to embrace the mission you offer us as gift and that our lives may be worthy of your love. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. O oh God, who by the wonderful exchange effected in this sacrifice have made us partakers of the one supreme Godhead, grant, we pray, that as we have come to know your truth, may we make it ours by a worthy way of life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. Through him, the children of light rise to eternal life, and the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful. For his death is our ransom from death, and in his rising, the life of all has risen. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who loves the human race, who always walks with us on this journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love. And when as once for his disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask you to send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine. That they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, on the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing. Breaking the bread, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving thanks, handed the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, when we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, Holy Father, 
as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through the passion and death of the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again. We offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church in which you show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us and grant that by the power of the spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your son in whose body and blood we have communion. By our partaking of this mystery, almighty father, give us life through your spirit, grant that we may be conformed to the image of your son and confirm us in a bond of communion together with Francis, our Pope, with Daniel, our Bishop, with Richard, our apostolic administrator, with all other bishops, priests, and deacons, and with your entire people. Grant that all the faithful of the church, looking into the signs of times by the light of faith, may constantly devote themselves to the service of the gospel. Keep us attentive to the needs of all, that sharing in their grief and pain, their joy and hope, we may bring them the good news of salvation and go forward with them along the ways of your kingdom. Remember our brothers and sisters and all who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ, and all the dead whose faith you alone have known, admit them to rejoice in the light of your face, and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us, when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place to live with you forever. There in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles and martyrs, with Saint Anne, the mother of Mary, and with all the saints, that we may praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory, all honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us of our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always and with your spirit. Let us take a moment to ask God's peace to come upon us as a family of faith. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, 
but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. We gather our thoughts now in prayer. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those that you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to a newness of life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. On this weekend, as we reverence all moms, we now ask a special blessing to be upon them. For our mothers who have given us life and love, taught us how to show reverence for life, we hold in a special way those mothers who've lost a child, that they may turn to the Lord with faith. And we pray for moms who have died that God may bring them to the joys of the kingdom since they embrace the mission given to them. We now bow our heads in reverence and ask God's blessings to come upon all mothers, spiritual mothers, biological mothers, adoptive mothers, godmothers, and mothers of faith. Loving God, as a mother gives life and nourishment to her children, so you watch over your church. Bless these women that they may be strengthened as Christian mothers. Let the example of their faith and love shine forth and grant that we, their sons and daughters, may honor them always with a spirit of profound respect. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. We are grateful also in this month of May to celebrate all the devotions to our Blessed Mother and the reconsecration of our nation to the Blessed Mother. We continue to pray as the Holy Father has asked us, and we ask God to continue to send blessings upon our nation, and all those who embrace the incredible missions given to them as mothers and fathers, as family, as children, and most importantly, as a people of faith. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. May you go forth with God's blessings, those of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Have a blessed week.